the baptism of repentance and the baptism of salvation. Luke chapter 12, verse 49 through 50 states, I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled, but I have a baptism to undergo and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Most churches today have the idea that baptism washes away sin, so it is an important ceremony. However, in the Bible, there is a differentiation between the baptism of repentance and the baptism of salvation. Through today's Bible verse, we hope you can receive the blessing of the baptism of salvation. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17 states, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. John the Baptist is the last prophet of the Old Testament and Jesus is the one who opened the doors of the New Testament. To use a metaphor, John the Baptist is the setting sun of the Old Testament, and Jesus is the rising sun of the New Testament. Therefore, although John the Baptist needed baptism, but Jesus received baptism from John the Baptist. At that time, the heavens opened and the dove of the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus and a sound could be heard from the sky. This is my son, with him I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, describes details about what happened from before Jesus was baptized to when John the Baptist said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near, and baptized many, as all near Jerusalem and Judea and the whole region of the Jordan came to John. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 states, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John the Baptist gave a baptism with water in order to have the people repent. Therefore, the baptism of John the Baptist was to have people understand their wrongdoing, repent, and lead them to the right path. However, he said the one who comes after him, namely Jesus, will baptize with the fire of the Holy Spirit and that he himself was not worthy of holding Jesus' sandals. Therefore, the baptism given by John and the baptism given by Jesus cannot be compared. However, if we look at the main Bible verse for today, Jesus who was baptized by John said, I have a baptism to undergo. Luke chapter 12, verse 49 through 50 states, I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled, but I have a baptism to undergo and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Jesus said he came to bring fire on the earth, but this fire was not kindled. Even his own disciples were not set on fire, which was why when he was crucified, they had all run away, which is why he lamented that he had a baptism to undergo and was under constraints until it could be completed. Baptism is the concept of washing away sin. Therefore, someone who is baptized should be cleansed of all sin. But there are countless people today who are baptized and still remain sinners. The reason being that John the Baptist's baptism is the baptism of repentance. We hope you can understand that the baptism of salvation appeared and was achieved through Jesus' crucifixion. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 states, Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? It means we were already baptized into Christ. We were baptized also into his death because through his bearing of the cross, he bestowed on us a baptism of fire and the Holy Spirit. 1 John chapter 5 Verse 6 through 7 states, And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify. The Holy Spirit is truth. So this baptism was received through the word of truth. Jesus' cross obliterated our sins. It was in the place of our sins, which was why it became the baptism of salvation. John the Baptist's baptism was to cause repentance, which was why it was a baptism of water. And those who received it remained sinners. However, Jesus took the place for our sins. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 states, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. 
He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. And as he completely washed away our sins when he bore the cross, we were cleansed of our sins with Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 6 states, Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, we were baptized through him. We are made free from all sin. Believe that through Jesus' crucifixion, we have received a new life. These blessings are what Jesus received in his second baptism. This baptism is the baptism of salvation. To know Jesus and through Jesus is how we receive salvation. It is when we understand this truth that we may receive the large blessings of salvation and have it come to fruition. Christ has taken on our sins for us. Therefore, there's no need for us to make sacrifices in place of sin. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 17 through 18 states, then he adds their sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Jesus took the cross in place of our sins. Therefore, there is no reason to make sacrifices for sin. Therefore, at the end of the day, the blessings will come to those who wait for Christ, who have nothing to do with sin. Hebrew chapter 9, verse 28 states, So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Regardless of sin, those who are waiting for Christ will be able to greet Christ when he appears a second time. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 2 states, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Through Jesus being crucified on the cross, we have already received our second baptism and are people who have nothing to do with sin. We are set free from the law of sin and death. I pray in Jesus' name that we are all blessed people who are set free from sin.